Hey there guys, what's going on? So, before I started taking apart iPods in this channel, I did do a video on the original Xbox. And it's a little long-winded, but it'll take you through the entire process of how to disassemble and, you know, the things to check and replace in the original Xbox when you first get one to make sure that it lasts a really long time. Um, and I liked that video, and I said I was going to do a follow-up on how to, uh, you know, unlock your Xbox, um, replace the hard drive in it, and essentially, you know, that's like the last piece, right? You can't do that right away because the Xbox has what's called a hard drive lock, which basically, unless the system's powered on, the data on the hard drive can't be accessed. Once you power on the system, it unlocks the hard drive because it needs to access it. And uh, from there, you know, you can, you know, use your Xbox, but... The hard drives in Xboxes are, you know, getting really close to uh, to 20 years old, and uh, chances are, you know, they're going to fail eventually. So, a lot of Xboxes die in that fashion, but they can be saved uh, as long as you get to them before their hard drive dies. Or, uh, if you do uh, want to go ahead and do the, the extra work it takes to install a mod chip. So, this video today is going to be covering all of that, and, um, you know, the long story short is essentially that the easiest way to do this is if you already have a working hard drive is to simply soft mod it and uh, with a soft mod you will uh, you'll be able to replace your hard drive with a soft mod as well um, as long as you know you can get your original master hard drive key and back it up um, so you know it preventatively is probably the best way to go about this because a soft mod is a lot easier than the uh, the hard mod but I'm gonna show you both today so let's go uh, take a look um, so I intended this video to be a little bit more comprehensive but a lot of the footage I shot for this was taken like months ago. So looking over the footage, uh, unfortunately I don't have like a clear beginning to end for every method I'm going to talk about, but essentially there's three, maybe four things we need to understand, and that is the difference between a hard mod and a soft mod for an original Xbox, and the two types of soft mods that there are, which are essentially the save game exploit and the hot swap method. Um, the hard mod method essentially gets you to those other two methods, sort of. Um, uh, not really, but anyway, long story short, we're going to try to be as comprehensive as I can be, but some of the footage in this video might be a little disjointed. However, if you follow the guides I'm going to link in the description, this video should help pad out the minutia and the bigger, bolder pictures that the, um, you know, extremely in-depth tutorials might kind of gloss over. So with all that said, let's get into the video. After successfully disassembling and correcting 15 plus years of wear on an original Xbox, where does one go from there? Well, it all depends on what you expect to get out of it, but at bare minimum, I recommend everyone who intends to keep their OGX running long term to install a soft mod. Now, the original reason for that is simple, right? Without that soft mod, you won't be able to download your master key from your hard drive and be able to replace it in the future when it inevitably dies. But aside from that, the OG Xbox offers plenty more features once unsigned code is allowed to run. From the ability to play backups of your games, which I consider to be an important feature as the Xbox DVD drive isn't getting any younger either, emulation, the removal of all region locks, and unlocking the Xbox DVD drive for movie playback while it lasts, without the need to own that proprietary dongle that Microsoft used to sell. But none of those features are the real reason I find it imperative. Like I said, you'll see that the Xbox uses the standard IDE parallel hard drive interface, however, it uses a locking key on that hard drive to keep the data within the Xbox hard disk and ensure that it hasn't been tampered with. This poses a time bomb issue. The hard drive within my Xbox was manufactured in 2005, making it 17 years old at the time of this video. Actually, close to 18 now. But who can say how long it will ultimately hold out? To quote from Flight Club, on a long enough timeline, the survival rate for everything drops to zero. That is that, given enough time, every hard drive will eventually fail. If you're not willing to install a mod chip into your Xbox, a dead hard disk will make your Xbox a brick. Not even swapping another hard drive from another Xbox can bring it back from the dead from this state. That is unless of course you've made a backup or nullified the EEPROM hard disk password. The EEPROM is essentially a file generated by running a piece of homebrew software on your modded Xbox. The file can tell specialized XFAT, the file system the Xbox uses, formatting tools what key to unlock the hard drive with. If you do this successfully, it will allow you to make a complete backup of your original hard drive and restore that backup to a brand new disk. All of this might sound complicated at first, but it's really quite easy compared to the 
hardware modification route. While we're on the topic of the hardware modification route, it's also possible to nullify the EEPROM with a tool called NK Patcher Settings. However, I tend to stray away from procedures that modify the factory flash chips of the original Xbox, although users report online that the procedure is deemed safe and generally community recommended. So what if you actually want to do the hard mod, aka a mod chip? These mod chips often have features built in to allow an OG Xbox to boot, with unlocked and even unformatted hard drives, allowing the user to configure them out of the box without needing to do any work to secure the original hard drive's contents. Essentially think of it as splicing in a replacement BIOS for the Xbox, a initial bootloader that allows the Xbox to have a safe place to fall back to assuming something is wrong with its original hard drive and its original bootloader. Quite a useful feature for those who are willing to put in the work. So yeah, that's basically the problem laid out. So let's first tackle the easiest way to solve it, the soft mod. The absolute safest way to modify your Xbox is the save game soft mod. This is where we introduce an exploit into the Xbox by the way of loading save games injected with a special payload that will bypass the security of the Xbox and allow us to install soft mod files. There are quite a few games that can allow you to do this, uh, the most popular of which is probably the original copy of Mech Assault. Platinum Hits versions of games can be a little bit spotty on whether or not they'll actually work with the save game exploit, so I recommend that if you're going to pick up a game to do a save game exploit to make sure you get the non-Platinum Hits version, simply confirm online which versions of games are compatible with the save game exploit. For performing the save game exploit, you'll require a few tools, all inexpensive, but you'll need a USB to controller port cable for the Xbox, and then a 4GB or smaller flash drive or SD card and reader that actually shows up in the Xbox. Now this part can be really tricky, um, it's basically just luck of the draw if a flash drive will actually be readable by the Xbox. It'll show up as a game pack or like a memory card. Um, <clears throat> but a lot of um, flash drives and SD cards just don't work. Um, there's no good reason for this. I think it's just what, what controller the flash drive uses. And like I said, it's trial and error. You'll have to try a bunch of different hard drives and finding them these days. Um, four gigabytes or smaller can be really tough. So that's the hardest part about doing this method is basically finding a flash drive that actually works with the Xbox. But if you get lucky, and uh, find one that works. You can use exploitable games such as 007 Agent Under Fire, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, as I already mentioned, Mech Assault, all of which work with the non-Platinum uh, Hits versions of their discs. Some serial numbers of Platinum Hits can work. Like I said, it's best to just avoid those versions. There is one other game that's a non-Platinum uh, that works, or I think actually works with both the Platinum Hits and the non-Platinum, and that is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. So, uh, oh, and I think the exception there is the French release doesn't work. So, again, if you can find an English version, Platinum Hits or non-Platinum, Tony, Ho Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4 works, no problem, but everything else, just go for the non-Platinum Hits version. So, assuming you have a working game, a working USB drive, and a controller port to USB adapter, the uh, process is very simple. You essentially take the save game from the flash drive, save it onto your hard drive, and then pop in your game disc, go into your game, load the save, and you'll basically have the beginning, you know, the start to configure your, your soft mod. From there, it'll basically go through the installer for the soft mod. You'll install it, you'll back up your EEPROM, and therefore your hard drive key. And with that backed up, you'll be able to take it back to an XFAT formatter piece of software and format a hard drive to replace your original hard drive in your Xbox. There's a lot of nuances to all of these methods, so for any ones that I'm talking about today, I'll try to link the appropriate console mods wiki um, article on all the details and methods to essentially do a mod for your Xbox, just to keep things simple for you guys and give you something that you can follow along while you're doing it with. Um, the next method that is available to you is called the hot swap method. It's very risky, I don't really recommend it, however it is the method that I did use myself. There is some pretty big disadvantages to this method, um, the biggest of which being the data risk. Um, essentially what you have to do is unplug the hard drive's data cable while it's turned on and plugged into the Xbox and, and therefore unlocked, um, and then plug it into a PC to read it. So it's, um, yeah, it's not a great idea, but uh, especially when you don't have your hard drive keys backed up, it's, it's like I said, it's very risky. However, it doesn't require a working flash drive or uh, a working game to essentially install your soft mod. 
Um, so it does also require you to own a, a PC with IDE. So it's 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 kind of like what you have on hand. Me being a tech nerd, I already had a system sitting here that had IDE, so I can basically do the hot swap method, but I didn't have a working game uh, to install an exploit with. So that's why I did the hot swap method. But after, you know, going through it, I generally recommend that you just... You know, go on eBay, pick yourself up a $5 copy of Mech Assault, and do it that way. Don't, uh, don't do what I did, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. Successfully done a hot swap, um, which is the primary method. I think the issue I was having is, you know, the Linux tool requires you to have an IDE-based CD drive. It says so in the README, and I clearly don't, so I can dump the heart or the C drive at least. I can dump the uh, important partitions and see if I can regroup and come up with a, another option for delivering the payload. All right, here is the softmod Xbox, 100% complete. We have our replacement two terabyte. Um, unfortunately, I only could find an 18 inch IDE, so it doesn't look very nice, but it is in there. Everything's connected and uh, it does indeed work when I power it on. I mean, the Unleashed X dashboard. Um, so this was a lot simpler than I thought, um, just to get us started. Obviously, we're still running on the stock hard drive. I need to immediately back up my EEPROM. Um, but yeah, essentially all we had to do was use Endure, um, copy the files exported from Endure into the corresponding partitions on the hard drive, which we can mount with Fat Explorer after doing the hot swap, swap trick. And uh, Bob's your uncle. Uh, it's that simple. You just put the files in the same spots that they're supposed to go after you clear out the data that was there for C and E on, uh, by default. So yeah, once you got the drive unlocked, the rest is easy. Just copy and paste what Endure um, spits out uh, when you're done. And as you can see, you know, there's some results from our hardware work our motherboard temps at 45 and our cpu is at 45 so clearly our repaste job did okay um yeah i have some work to do i need to dump my uh my system stuff and uh get that backed up immediately so we're on to that now but yep xbox is soft modded nice amber light of soft mod and yeah guys that's kind of it the long and short of it is just defeating that locked hard drive password the hot swap method is, like I said, it's easy. Once you've got the Xbox into service mode by disconnecting the DVD drive's uh, power cable and then turning it on, it'll go into error code 12. From there, the hard drive will unlock. I usually give it a good, you know, 10, 20 seconds to make sure in uh, error 12 to ensure that the hard drive becomes unlocked. From there, you unplug the uh, data cable from it, plug in the corresponding IDE, uh, master cable from your PC into that now unplugged hard drive, turn on the computer, boot into Windows, from there it should show up as any other hard drive, um, you open uh, Fat Explorer, and then it should be mountable as an Xbox hard drive. From there, you can uh, access all of the partitions, and what you would do is you would uh, essentially uh, back up the C drive and the E drive partitions on the hard drive. Those are your main partitions for a stock Xbox. From there, you can copy over the softmod um, C and E corresponding files that will be provided in a softmod tool, and that will essentially give you a softmodded Xbox. From there, you can back up your EEPROM with the tools in that softmod, and you're done. So that's pretty much it. And the same situation basically applies to a hard modded Xbox. The difference being that a hard modded Xbox has that initial bootstrapper um, flash that's built into the, uh, into the mod chip and can allow you to run a custom BIOS. A custom BIOS is kind of out of the scope of this video, but they unlock other features not that many, but the biggest one to consider would be if you want to go even bigger than two terabytes. Two terabytes is the limit for a stock Xbox with a, uh, you know, or, or, or stock BIOS. Or custom BIOSes can go above two terabytes these days, but they require special ones like Sir BIOS, um, and they only work with three terabytes or higher drives. Um, essentially allowing you to put, I mean, two terabytes is more than enough. That's all I use and that's all I recommend. And I don't really want to get into Sir BIOS because I've never used it before, but essentially you can go up to 16 terabytes in one of these with a hard mod, not with a soft mod. I got a brand new, um, 
SATA 2 terabyte in there. Um, some people like to do SSDs. Um, I don't really see the benefit. It's going over IDE. IDE is already slower than a regular SATA hard drive, so I wouldn't really recommend using a, an SSD unless you really want to make like a completely silent Xbox with no moving parts. That I can understand. Uh, a mod chip also allows you to boot without the DVD drive, but in a soft mod, you do still need to have a powered on DVD drive to boot. Another little advantage of the hard mod. Um, one last thing to cover would be to say, you know, I used a SATA to IDE adapter. There are a lot of these on the market, um, but there are better guides out there for doing a initial soft mod that will have uh, parts lists of what you need to grab for that conversion. Um, but the biggest ones are you need to have a 80 pin IDE cable as opposed to the stock 40 pin. That's because SATA requires 80 pin. Um, PETA can work with 40 or 80, but SATA conversion does require that 80 pin. Um, ideally, there's two lengths. I believe one is an 18 and one is a 24 or a 22 or something. Um, and uh, you can make it work with the shorter IDE cables. That's all I had, um, but it looks neater with the longer one if you can find it. I find them extremely hard to find these days, but that's pretty much the extent of this video. Um, I hope you guys learned something. I hope this helps you out. I know I didn't get to show you like beginning to end how it works, but essentially what I just described is it. So hopefully this video will help you guys out when it comes to uh, keeping your Xboxes alive for an extremely long time. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the whole scenario start to finish uh, as, as best as I can capture it for you guys. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you all have a great day and have a good Xbox. Okay, goodbye now. I'm leaving.